Well, it's been months since the deadly cholera outbreak in Haman Skral, this in Pretoria. The Royval Waste Treatment Plant was at the center of the water contamination crisis. Well, the city of Tuani promised to invest 450 million rand over the next three years towards its refurbishment, but it's been estimated that it would cost about 4 billion rand just to complete the upgrades. At least 23 people have died in Haman Skral due to the cholera outbreak. And our reporter, Budeli Tsuiti Jones, is back there and joins us now to, of course, uh, give us that breakdown of how it's looking, but also what promises are being made to actually fix up this problem. Uh, Pule, good to have you back, colleague. I mean, let's talk about uh, even your conversation earlier on with the MMC. Are there plans, long sustainable interventions to resolve the water crisis out in Tswani? Well, the MMC says that uh, there are plans to actually improve the uh, water situation in the area of Hamaskra, but you, you can see just behind me here where we've now moved to Mopane, residents are still struggling with water. And as a result of the uh, Samu uh, strike that's happening in the city of Tswane, it has had a, you know, a bearing on the infrastructure. We told just around this area there's actually a pipe burst which has led to residents not having water as well. It's been 11 days without water and the strike has been um, on for nearly three weeks now so you can imagine how that strike has a ripple effect on service delivery but I just want to speak to one of the, uh, um, the community leaders here uh, Mr. Denny thank you very much for uh, chatting to me uh, Brad Denny explain to me how long have you been without water and as well yeah it's been now 11 days without water in our area there's a bust pipe there and water has been wasted. Gillions, 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 kiloliters of water is <coughs> being um, wasted. We have reported this with the councillor. We get in no joy. We send a memor a, what you call a correspondence with the MMC and the office. We're not getting any response. Mm. Uh, so far, people that are helping us, uh, not getting any joy from our councillor, from the MMC, but at least from Ward 21 councillor and Ward 22 councillors, they've arranged some trucks, water trucks, to come and deliver water in our area. Mm. It's a very dire situation because this is an old area. We have old people who are living here. Mm. We have uh, sickling people. Um, even the, the water that we're getting from the trucks, it's non-consumable. Consumable. Nobody can drink that kind of water because they've got color on it. We don't want the Hamaskral situation happening here. Mm. At least if somebody can adhere to our request, we're no longer only crying about our, our, our area because those waters that is being wasted there is going to affect the whole Mabopani not long mm. because the reservoirs will run dry, definitely. There's going to be chaos. If can somebody come and assist us with water? We cannot stay for 11 days without water. I mean, we are not in the platterlands here. Mm. We're paying services. If we pay services, let somebody hear us, please. Mm. And tell us, how has the you know, strike had, had an impact on what we're seeing here as well? Uh, what we have done, we had a peaceful, um, uh, what you call, um, protest on Friday, the whole day. We thought somebody will hear us and listen to us. Nothing is happening. So today we're doing, we're accelerating this. We, we're going to work with the media only today. If we don't get any response, then we s will escalate the protest mm. to something else. Mm. And we should not be blamed because nobody's listening to us. Mm. Definitely. Thank you very much. Let me continue to show you those visuals there, Dumelo. Um, as Danny said, he was one of the uh, residential leaders in this community, saying that they don't want a similar situation like what they're seeing in Hamanskara. But you can see just about uh, 10 buckets uh, empty, waiting for the water uh, tank tankers to come and fill them in with fresh uh, drinkable water but he says that that's also not the case because at some points they were very skeptical of the water coming from the water tanks and this is a situation that we're seeing right now uh, no water in residents are still waiting it's been about 11 days and we will of course show you that um, pipe that is burst that's that's burst and that's not really in good condition here in Mopane. Mama, maybe uka wale ro noro bo ro thalose tsor le 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 sokola yang mo le thalose tsor le sokola yang mo mama ka ka tabolesna metimo.
Thank you very much. As one of the uh, residents here saying that, look, it's, it's quite unhygienic. They don't have water to even um, you know, take or to drink when uh, uh, taking their medication as well. So they've tried to uh, speak to the city of Tuane, but nothing really has been done. As you can see on my left hand side, you see the elderly as well you know, coming with water buckets. So this pipe that needs to be repaired is an issue that they say they've been trying to escalate for quite some time. There was a protest, a peaceful protest here uh, last week Friday, and they're hoping that the city of Tuane can really uh, come to the fore here and address the situation of water. I spoke to the MMC of Utility Services earlier on Timber Force and asked him about, you know, if whether they're safeguarding this public uh, water infrastructure as a result of the illegal strike. And he said that uh, law enforcement was deployed everywhere, but we understand that law enforcement is also stressed in terms of resources because some of those affected um, by the strike are also affiliated to a sum with the union as well. So you can imagine the kind of resources that have been stretched out to accommodate everyone. The water tankers as well, we're told there isn't enough in this community. And this is why you're seeing this delay in response time in, sort of in, in terms of residents not having water as well. So it is quite uh, you know, a mess here in this area. And we'll, of course, show you that uh, pipe burst that's currently um, at the core of these challenges here in Mamopane uh, Block DD. Uh, Pula, I just want to also come to you around the point um, regarding the water tankers not being safe to consume, at least by some residents, saying they, they, they're quite um, you know, reluctant to use that water. It seems the MMC gave you a response in terms of assuring uh, the residents that the water is of quality, or at least they're doing uh, maintenance work and making sure they continue to analyze mm. the water and monitor it. Uh, but I just wonder if it's good enough uh, you know, for the people to trust what the MMC has to say if they say they continuously drink water that they can see is unclean. This is the reason why I asked the MMC earlier on around, you know, the source of contamination. And he said that, you know, they were working with various scientific entities who do research, conduct research, also using technology, who guaranteed the city that the water is actually clean and drinkable. But of course, I pushed back and asked him, but, you know, on the ground, it's a different situation. We spend most of the time with the residents who tell us that the water is not clean. Um, but the MMC is saying that, look, he can reassure us that the water is clean. But you heard for yourself here when I spoke to one of the community leaders who actually said that this water isn't quite clean and there's a lot of anxiety when having to actually, you know, vie into that option of relying on water from water tankers as well. But what can they do? They're quite desperate. They need water to actually, you know, <coughs> clean themselves for cooking, to actually relieve themselves as well. So this is the situation residents are faced with. But also quite importantly here, one of the community leaders is saying that, look, we're paying for tax, you know, and if we're paying for tax, we should be getting water as well. We are paying our rates here in the city. We should be uh, getting water as well. We're paying for the lights. We should be getting electricity as well. But this is a challenge that continues to affect these municipalities across South Africa, and particularly in the city of Tuani as well, which has a lot to deal with at the moment because there is a situation of the illegal strike where about 94 municipal workers have been dismissed for um, embarking on what is called is now called the illegal strike as well. Um, so we're still waiting to see when you know this kind of situation here will really be looked into because if the city of Tuani and those Samu workers do not resolve or come to an agreement to you know give them an extra salary increments, this is what we're going to be seeing on a daily basis where services are really really uh, decaying and public infrastructure isn't being taken care of as well in this metro. I think